Jackie Sees a Star by Marion Zimmer Bradley Originally published in Fantastic Universe, September 1954 Narrated by Tom Trisser So you want to hear about the Edwards child? Oh no, you don't get by with that one. You can just put on your hat again and walk right back down those stairs, mister. We've had too many psychologists and debunkers around here, and we don't want any more. Oh, you're from the university? Excuse me, Professor. I'm sorry. But if you knew what we've put up with from reporters in all kinds of crackpots, and it isn't good for Jackie either, he's getting awfully spoiled. If you knew how many paddlings I've had to give that kid in just this past week. His mother? Me? Oh, no. No, I'm just Jackie's aunt. His mother, my sister Beth, works at the tax bureau. Jackie's father died when he was only a week old. You know, he'd been at the big bombings in 64, and he never really got over it. It was pretty awful. Anyhow... I look after Jackie while my sister works. He's a good little kid, spoiled, but what kid isn't these days? It was I who heard it first, as a matter of fact. You see, I'm around Jackie a lot more than his mother is. I was making Jackie's bed one morning when he came up behind me and grabbed me round the waist and asked, real serious, Aunt Dorothy, are the stars really other suns like this one? And do they have planets too? I said, Why, sure, Jackie. I thought you knew that. He gave me a hug. Thanks, Aunt Dorothy. I thought Mig was kidding me. Who's Mig? I asked. I knew most of the kids on the block, you see, but there was a new little girl on the corner. I asked, Is she the little Jackson girl? Jackie said, Mig isn't a girl. And did he sound disgusted? Besides, he said, Mig doesn't live round here at all. His name is really Migado Londomier, but I call him Mig. He doesn't really talk to me. I mean, just inside my head. I said, oh. I laughed a little bit, too, because Jackie isn't really an imaginative kid. But I guess most kids go through the imaginary playmate stage. I had one when I was a kid. I called her Bitsy. But anyway, Jackie just ran out to play. And I didn't think about it again until one day he asked me what a spaceship looked like. So I took him to see that movie. You know, the one Paul Douglas played in, about the trip to Mars. But would you believe it, the kid just stuck up his nose. I mean a real spaceship, he said. Mig showed me a lot better one than that. So I spoke kind of sharp. You know, I didn't like him to be rude. And he said... Well, Mig's father is building a spaceship. It goes all the way across the gal, the galaxy, I guess, and goes through... Aunt Dorothy, what's hyperspace? Oh, ask Mig what it is, I said, real cross with him. You know how it is when kids act smart. The next day was Saturday, so Beth was at home with Jackie, and I stayed with Mother. But when I came over Monday morning, she asked me, Dorry... Where on earth did Jack pick up all this rocket ship lingo, and what kind of a phase is this MIG business? I told her I'd taken him to see Rocket Mars, and she was quite provoked. Beth still thinks rockets are kind of comic book stuff, and she gave me a long talk about trashy movies, and getting him too excited, and overstimulating his imagination, and so forth. Then she gave me the latest developments on this MIG affair. It seemed that Jackie had given with the details. Mig was a little fellow who lived on a planet halfway across the galaxy, and his father was a rocket ship engineer. Well, you know how kids are about spaceships. Jackie wasn't quite six, but he's always been kind of old for his age. That afternoon he started teasing me about taking him to the planetarium. He kept on about it until I finally took him that evening after Beth got home. It was quite late when we left. The stars had all come out, and while we were walking home, I asked him which one of the stars Mig lived on. And, Professor, do you know what that child said? He said, You can't live on a star, dummy. You'd burn up. 
He lives on a planet around the star. He pointed off toward the north, fidgeted around for a few minutes, and finally said, Well, the sky kind of looks different where Mig lives, but I think it's up there somewhere. And he pointed into the Big Dipper. I didn't encourage the Mig business, but good gosh, it didn't need encouraging. I guess it was two or three days later when Jackie told me that Mig's son was going to blow up, so his father was building a spaceship, and they were coming here to live. I kept a straight face, but I couldn't help wondering what would happen when Jackie got his Mig, so to speak, down to Earth. Probably it would just ease the fantasy off into a more normal phase, and it would gradually disappear. One night in August, Beth wanted to go to a movie with some girls from her office, so I stayed with Jackie. I was reading downstairs when I suddenly heard him bawling upstairs, not very loud, but real unhappy and pitiful. I ran upstairs and took him up, thinking he'd had a bad dream, and held him, just shaking and trembling, until he finally quieted down to a hiccup now and then. And then he said, in the unhappiest little voice, Mig has to leave his, his Erling on the planet, to get blowed up with the sun. It's a little bitty thing like a puppy, but his daddy says there isn't any room on the spaceship for it. But he got it for his, well I guess it was kind of like a birthday, and he wanted to show it to me when he got here. Well, I guess the lecture I gave him about imagination had something to do with it, because I didn't hear any more about Mig for quite some time. He kept Beth posted, though. He even told her when the spaceship was going to take off and when Mig's son was going to blow up, or else where we'd see it. I don't know which. But anyway, he made her mark it down on the calendar. The 5th of November it was. Well, in September I went back to college. And, well, I don't just talk about things outside of the family, but my boyfriend, Dave, he was almost like one of the family, and this year he'd got a job working with Professor Milliken at the observatory. You know Professor Milliken, don't you? I thought so. I told Dave about this mig phase of Jackie's, and one night when Dave was over at Beth's with me, he got the kid talking about it. He humoured the kid a lot. He even took him over to the observatory and let Jackie look through the big telescope there, and of course, Jackie gave Dave all the latest details on mig. It seemed that this spaceship had already taken off. That was why he hadn't heard much from Mig lately, because Mig's daddy sealed him up in a little capsule, and he won't wake up till they're way out in hyperspace, because the spaceship will go faster and faster and awful fast, and unless he is sealed up and asleep, it will hurt him something awful. And Dave humoured Jackie, and talked about acceleration and hyperspace and shortcuts across the galaxy, and I don't know what all and Jackie just sat there and drank it all in as if he understood every word. Dave even wrote down the day when Mig's son was supposed to blow up, and promised to keep an eye on it. Jackie started to kindergarten, of course, about then, and I thought he'd forgotten all about Mig. I didn't hear anything more for at least six weeks. But one night, I was babysitting for Beth again, the telephone rang, and it was Dave. Dorothy! Remember Jackie's little galactic citizen whose world was supposed to go up in smoke tonight? I glanced at the calendar. It was November 5th. Now, look here, Dave, I said firmly. You are not going to disillusion the kid like that. He's forgotten all about the silly business. Besides, he's in bed. Well, get him up, said Dave. Dory, get a load of this. The biggest supernova I ever saw just exploded in the north. Get Jackie over here. I want to ask him some questions. He meant it. I could tell that he meant it. I ran upstairs and bundled Jackie up in a blanket. I didn't even bother to put his clothes on, just a blanket over his pyjamas, and took him down to the observatory in a taxi. I wish you could have seen the place, Jackie sitting on the table in his pyjamas, telling Professor Milliken all about Mig and the spaceship and the little sealed capsule and the Erling and all the rest of it. I guess you can imagine what a week we went through. Scientists and reporters and psychologists and parapsychologists and just plain debunkers. And the crackpots. Oh yes, the crackpots. And then they dug up the records about Jackie's father. 
They couldn't even let the poor man rest quiet in his grave, and when they found out about the bombing, they talked about hard radiations and mutations until a darn near went crazy, and Beth had to quit her job. They even talked about telepathy, just as if Jackie was some kind of a freak. He had to take the poor kid out of kindergarten. He hated that. He was getting so much good out of it, and he enjoyed it so much having the other children to play with, and painting, and making those cute little baskets, and he'd learned to tell time and everything. And then the spaceship landed, and I tell you, we haven't had a minute's peace since. Oh, that's all right. I was going to call them in for lunch in a few minutes anyway. Jackie! Jackie! Will you and Mig come in here for a few minutes? A friend of your Uncle Dave's wants to talk to you two boys. The End Subscribe for your daily stories of future's past. And don't forget to check out the channel. There's hundreds of stories. Hundreds of stories.